an analysis for the family. Once in a while, he'd run out of the house and go to a movie alone. He needed a break. From, there were, you know, there were no TV movies then. It was channel two, four, and five. And that was it. There was no movie. No movies on TV, really. So a movie would come out, he'd go, he'd come back, and he'd give a, a movie review. And the movie review would be, ah, it was a stiff. It's true. These two shows are now a stiff. I told it to Teddy. <clears throat> and he agrees with me 100%. Then, <clears throat> there's nothing left on TV. I mean, since the other show went off that I used to watch on Sundays, I forgot it already. It just shows you how fleeting media is. Like, if I left the radio, would you remember me tomorrow? No. No, you would. You remember me for a few days. <clears throat> Where's Savage? Who was that guy? I loved him. He was on the radio for 20 some odd years. Then he something happened to him, whatever. <clears throat> would you remember me? <clears throat> yeah, don't call. Yeah, Mike, I would. Yeah, you have a memorial to me in your cabinet. You have a little, a little thing. It's, it's an altar with my books in it. And you go and you put a candle every night to me. Yeah, right. So the media is such a fleeting thing. I forgot the name of the show, Ray Donovan. It was over a week. I forgot it already. I swear to you. I forgot the other one it was on. The detective, over, gone. The media is amazing. It's such a here and now. You know, there's a certain beauty in the me being in the media. You know, the gurus used to say in the 60s, be here and now. They all wish they had a radio show. It's the most immediate medium ever, ever imaginable. You're here now, and you're gone in a second. This is really a be here now. It's like being a guru on the radio. Be here now. Well, I'm here now. And if you care to join the show, it's 855 The phone number, 855 400 Savage. And if you get through my call screen at Jim and you get on the air, you'll reach more people than you've met in your entire life. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O I N. Do shopping on. We come here in unity because we've been invited by the minister. Louis Farrakhan, and with that power, and with Kwame Ture uh, inviting us to Libya, Gaddafi is still alive. So we say, down, down, USA! Down, down, USA! Down, down! Freedom to the Dene people! There you go. See what Obama has wrought? Isn't that nice? what he's brought up from the underbelly of America to the National Mall. I mean, when you heard it in Jeremiah Wright's church, you dismissed it as not connected to the president and his wife, who sat through it for 20 years. I know if I went to a movie for 20 minutes and I didn't like it, I'd leave. I wouldn't sit in the movie for 20 years. But Obama sat for 20 years and listened to Jeremiah Wright, where they chanted, down, down, USA, and America can go to hell. You know all of that stuff. Well, <clears throat> they're still doing it. And why do you think they're coming out of the woodwork now? Hmm? Can you put two and two together yet? Well, that's why you have to elect Hillary Clinton, because she's so much more moderate. You know she wouldn't cavort with such individuals. You know that she's separate from the Black Lives Matter crowd. You know that she's separate from the anti-white racists crowd. You know she's separate from the Louis Farrakhan white haters crowd, don't you? You know she doesn't appease them or cater to them, don't you? Sure, just put another Democrat in and see if you still have a country left. Well, anyway, that's my opinion, one man's opinion. I recognize that uh, you'd rather I not talk about these things, but that's what I do talk about. And the country is hanging like a loose tooth. Now, sometimes when a loose tooth is hanging like this, it's better to just yank it and then fill up the cavity because I don't know that the, it's worth saving this tooth. This tooth is hanging and it's so rotten, you may as well yank it. It's the Savage Nation. This is the home of the Savage Nation. Holding forth five days a week for the last 21 years with occasional days off. Phone number 855-407-282. Website michaelsavage.com. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. When the chrome was thick and the women were straight and we knew where the president was born, welcome to the Savage Nation. I'm not saying turn the clock back to the 40s when America had defeated Hitler and America's men had come home triumphant. No, I'm not saying turn the clock back to that, but somebody's got to do something about the defeatism of this uh, snake in the White House. Somebody's got to do something. Someone has to say something. Here's a guy who goes on 60 Minutes. We have one newsman willing to stand up to the liar. And he, he squirms out of everything. He'll never cop to anything he does. Why? Because he's gotten away with it his whole life. Everyone's been afraid to say one word to him that's real. His whole life he's gotten away with liar, lies. Shall I play the 60 Minutes interview or not? This is a good interview, I got to tell you. Let's start with uh, clip one. This was your president on 60 Minutes with one newsman left in the United States of America on television. Listen to clip one. The last time we talked was this time last year. Yeah. Uh, and the situation in Syria and Iraq had begun to worsen vis-a-vis -vis right. ISIS. And you had just unveiled uh, a plan right. to provide air support for troops in Iraq and also some airstrikes in Syria and the training and equipping of a moderate Syrian force. You said that this would degrade and eventually destroy ISIS. Over time. Over time. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. You hear? Right? Wait. Okay, keep going. Over time. Yeah, right away he has an excuse. What, over a thousand years? Maybe over a thousand years you'll degrade America. And they'll, you know, but go on, I'll play the rest of it. I got to. No, I don't want to hear the whole thing again. We have such garbage equipment. I can't believe you can't pick a tape up from where it stops. This is so bad for a show like mine, where I start and stop things. Okay, but that's the limitations of the medium, I guess. I get frustrated. I get angry. And f forgive me for including you, this my audience, because I have radio Tourette's. You'll have to forgive me. Whatever's on my mind, I say, and uh, I don't control it, which makes it electrifying for you. I understand that. So where can you pick it up from? Play what you have. Let's see. ISIS. Over time. Over time. Yeah. But it's been a year. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't say it was going to be done in a year. No. Okay. But you There's said... There's a question in here somewhere. <laughs> see? Never answer a question. Never admit defeat. Constantly bamboozle people with your lies. Okay, here we go to the next one. I don't want to uh, go to two. Go to three. Go to clip three. Here's your president again, lying his way out of an interview with Steve Croft. What we've been able to do is to stall ISIL's momentum. To Lie. take away some of the key uh, land that they were holding. Liar. To push back, particularly in Iraq. Liar. Uh, against some population centers that they threatened. Liar. And in Syria, we've been able to disrupt and? a number of their operations. But Liar. what we have not been able to do so far, and I'm the first one to acknowledge this, is it's to nothing. change the dynamic inside of Syria. Oh, and come on. Here All right, let's stop here. He's gotten away with talking where he hears his own voice, and he starts to believe his own lies. You know, there's a saying, don't, don't, uh, how shall I put it this way? My friend uh, put it another way. To thine own self do not BS. He's a very wealthy man, my friend. He sold a company for hundreds of millions of dollars that he built out of nothing. He's an older gentleman. He said, to thine own self, do not BS. I guess nobody taught that to Mr. Obama. So he's gotten away with it all his life. And the sycophants, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, sir. Yeah, well, go on. Let's go on. To find a way in which we can help moderate opposition on the ground. But no such existing we've thing. never been in, under any illusion that militarily oh, no. we ourselves yeah. can uh, solve the problem inside uh -huh. of Syria. Why not? What do you mean you're under the illusion? I guess Russia has that illusion. I guess Putin is the illusionist and you're not. You're the realist. We've never been under any illusion that militarily we ourselves can solve the problem inside of Syria. First of all, the liar boasted last week that he has a coalition of 60 countries. What coalition? He has a knife and a fork from Turkey. He has a plate from uh, Brazil. What coalition? 
What are they providing? Nothing. Dancing bands? I, I never heard anything like this. We have a coalition, and look at him. Look at Putin. He has no coalition. It's him alone. Why, my coalition of 60 has done nothing, but we're there. Never been under the illusion that militarily we ourselves can solve the problem inside of Syria. Putin has that illusion that he can solve it by bombing the vermin into the Stone Age. So then Croft goes on in clip four to take on, he tries to, to get the liar to admit anything. Listen to four. One of the key players now is Russia. Yeah. A year ago when we did this interview, there was some saber rattling between the United States and Russia on the Ukrainian border. Now it's also going on in Syria. You said a year ago that the United States, America leads, were the indispensable nation. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Putin seems to be challenging that leadership. In what way? Let, let's think about this. Well, he's a move. Hold, it, let, he's, hold, he's, it, hold he's, it. In what way? Could you? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you did a cartoon of a character, a cartoon character that's deaf, dumb, and blind, it would have to be like this story right here. In what way is Putin leading? And what, you're losing, you did nothing for a year, and they've, they've gained territory, conquered, blown up the monuments in Palmyra, raping, kidnapping, selling young girls in a slave market, and you're sitting here telling us you're winning and Putin's losing? He had to step in. He had to step in because he knew if they took over all of Syria, he'd have a real problem on his hands. And unlike your doofus in the White House, he doesn't want them to take over all of Syria. He wants to kill them before they can do that. And you know how many Americans who love this country wish Putin were the president of the United States instead of this, this uh, creature? Why do I say a horrible thing like that? A, it's true, and B, it's satisfying to finally say the truth. The fact of the matter is Putin does things that are in the national interest of Russia. He does things that are in the national interest of Russia, and he respects Russia's sovereignty and Russia's desire to survive the Islamo-fascist threat that is ongoing around the whole world. Obama, on the other hand, doesn't even acknowledge there's an Islamo-fascist threat. That's the trouble we're in, you see. It's now 13 minutes after the hour. There's more to this interview. And uh, we're going to play some of it. We've got the Million Stooge March, where they hated America and hated white people in the National Mall, downtown USA. Uh, we must not let a minority of Europeans rule over the majority of the black inhabitants. Jeremiah Wright, Obama's pastor, saying right, Jesus was a Palestinian. And then connecting Palestinians to Ferguson, Missouri, trying to tie that together. By the way, <coughs> Jeremiah Wright is such a hypocrite and a liar. He lives in a very, very expensive home in Chicago, acts like he's down with the people. Isn't that interesting how all of these phonies try to stir up the idiot masses to hate Whitey? And they live in these huge mansions, surrounded by wealth, surrounded by bodyguards, and all they're doing is hating the country to let low lowlifes like them rise to such a high position. That's how far he'd get in Africa with his, with his mouth like that. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I didn't think I'd go here. I really didn't. I tried to have a light day on a, you know, Columbus Day. No one's listening. It's probably a core audience now of, I don't know, 50% of what it normal is. Everyone's on a vacation. They're about vacation, another vacation day for America. Another day off. Yee, yippee, take the drugs and go on vacation. Yee, let's go to the wine country. Let's drink cheap Chardonnay. Hey, you like that Chardonnay, Mildred? Yeah, it's real good. It tastes just like vanilla soda. Just like wine is supposed to taste. Yeah, they didn't doctor the wine for the average tourist. No, I don't even drink wine anymore. I can't. It's undrinkable. It tastes like bad soda lately with alcohol in it. So I'm strictly a beer guy, beer and vodka. Not together, no, no. Looking back in my past, in my journals, I can't believe the stuff I was drinking. When I was hanging out, out with the artists in the uh, bars in Mallorca for a brief period of my life, I couldn't believe it. They were drinking brandy and champagne, cheap champagne and shots of brandy in the champagne. I did it, too. I figured that's what artists do. Most of them wound up drunks dead on the floor of the bar. I, 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 I caught on pretty quick that that was no lifestyle for me, but I enjoyed it while I did it. The Bar Africa, it would open in the morning, they were in there right away. <laughs> all of the expat Brits, all the poets, some of them were really famous. And I'll never forget it, it was great stuff. Good stuff, it made for good, good, good stuff. Good stuff in my life. Good stuff, it didn't put a dime in my pocket. 
Good stuff. See, this is the thing about the bohemian lifestyle, is that when you're doing it, you think it's fun and it's going to lead to something. It leads to nothing. 